Hi, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining me this morning. My name is Dr. Patrick Saw, and um, I'll be talking about having the best for both IT and management. Okay, uh, this is a talk for students, and uh, I believe that you'll find it interesting uh, to, and useful for you to learn about how to future proof your careers. Okay, and I, I like to commend all of you uh, for joining me this morning. Okay, um, I know you can be doing many other things like uh, playing handphone, PS4, or sleeping in, but uh, the fact that you have taken time to learn about something that helps you in the future uh, is very commendable. Okay, so give yourself a high five. Okay, now. Okay, let me know where you are from. If you don't mind, let me know your name and where you are from. Okay. And yeah. And I also introduce myself as well. Uh, okay, uh, let's let me show you my slides. Huh? But uh, while I'm showing you my slides, please type in your name and where you are from, whether you're from MMU Malacca or if you are not from MMU Malacca, the uh, Cyber Jaya or uh, if not, which hometown are you from? Okay, so let me show you my slides. Okay. Okay, um, yes, I'll be talking about these six topics, uh, the introduction about myself, why you should consider studying IT, and uh, the other part is, what if you don't like IT, okay, and why for people, why you should also study management, and I'd like to introduce the course BAMS, and last but not least, why study at MMU? Okay, what's so special about MMU? And um, one more topic is then we have a discussion time, question, answer, all this. Okay, um, yes. Okay, so the topic today itself that I like to talk about is you uh, can't decide IT or management. How about having the best of two worlds and how to? future proof your career okay we are living today in, indeed in very uncertain times jobs are being lost okay uh, let me introduce myself a little bit okay so you um, i'm dr patrick so i'm the head of department of it and law unit in the faculty of management multimedia university okay my degree is in economics uh, double major in computer science and accounting. So I actually had the best of both worlds, computer science and accounting from Monash University not so long ago. Okay. Uh, and in that, uh, I work in Singapore as a programmer, started off as a programmer, uh, promoted to team leader, to project manager, to application consultant. Uh, in one company, Singapore Technologies, computers singapore technologies computers you may know is uh, one of the biggest company in singapore okay uh, they plan to be a first singapore born multinational company okay, that was uh, their plan uh, is of course owned by the singapore government now then i move on to aia singapore as the IS manager, not as an insurance salesman. Uh, okay, as the IS manager, I served for three years there. And uh, after that, I decided that Malaysia is a better place to live. Okay, the uh, Singapore government actually offered me citizenship. At the time, they will keep pushing me to take up citizenship. But like many of you, 
I believe that Malaysia is a better place to live in. Okay, so I came back, I did my Master's of Science, and I did my PhD in Multimedia University, and here am I. Okay, okay. that's introduction of myself. The next part I want to do is, that why should you study IT? Okay. Now, the, the short answer is, of course, everyone know, everyone know that IT is important. Okay, so, uh, but I think to knowing and understanding is different. Okay, we may know something, but we may not understand it. And it is important to understand why IT is important, why you need to study IT. Okay, um, now I went to, I've been blessed uh, to go to many countries. I went to China. I went to, I was in India for five months. I went to Middle East. I traveled to Europe, America, Australia, um, Japan, you know. And, okay, let's, you know, in China, in the Middle East, in India, these Asian countries, uh, each of these countries have a very rich history. Okay, um, the civilization is even older, this older than the Western world. Okay, and uh, each of these country, uh, China uh, produced very beautiful things. For example, this uh, covered red jar, this red jar with dragon and sea design, uh, uh, produced in 1521. Okay, long time ago, very exquisite. Okay, even today, if you very hard to produce this thing and not cheap. Lah, huh? um, Middle East also. Middle East has, you know, the Egyptians have um, have made the signs of mummies, everything very exquisite. You go to the London Museum, I, I was privileged to go there and the first thing you see is the mummies, okay, the dead bodies. Okay, uh, India, I was there for five months. And again, same thing, uh, very rich history. Okay, a lot of very nice things, all this. Okay, each of these countries actually develop things. Okay, uh, beautiful things, they can make beautiful things. They got great craftsmen, all this, they got kings and everything. But you know what was the difference? What is the key changer between Asian countries and Western countries? Okay, why are Western countries having a higher standard of living than us. Are they more clever? Are they superior than us? Anyone want to guess our answer? What do you think? Shout out. Bye. Yeah. Now, the game changer is this, uh, the Industrial Revolution. Okay. Now, China, India, Middle East, we have all created things, invented things. Okay? Uh, very good craftsmen, all this. But the game changer is the Industrial Revolution. Okay? Uh, why do I say Industrial Revolution is a game changer? You uh, Let me go on and tell you. Uh, okay, the first Industrial Revolution started in 1760s in Great Britain. Okay? This industrial revolution uh, invented and utilized steam and water as a source of power to mechanize product, to energize, to, uh, to run the mechanical things. Okay, so they could run the uh, trains, uh, factories. Okay. Okay, and with this mechanization of production, such things, uh, productivity was increased. Instead of producing a uh, hand knitting a uh, sweater, and it take one person thirty days, uh, full time, no rest, uh, thirty days to come up with a sweater, uh, hand knitting, uh, they can now produce a hundred sweaters a day in a machine. Okay, so high increase in productivity and uh, this of course led to the formation of cities before that 
the society were all agriculture societies um, with these inventions all these cities came about factories came about london was born the second industrial revolution started was in 1870s uh, started in europe and united states okay in this industrial revolution they invented electricity and mass manufacturing okay things like the steel industry was invent was created during that time okay railway networks uh, with the steel uh, can actually go from the east of united states to the west of united states it uh, and also from uh, england all the way through from the north to the south across europe as well okay it went through all and with railway networks all this job um, communication transportation became much more efficient the third industrial revolution started in the 50s and that was the electronic and it technology okay computers were invented and with computers automation and later on internet in the 90s and communication okay and again uh, the standard of living has gone up productivity has okay, today imagine in my time when i was a small boy okay uh, 17 years old like you uh, 17 yeah say 17 years old like you uh, that time i no handphone one no email or so okay no email only thing is we we call on the house phone and that was expensive and we write letters okay uh, and so today everyone have handphone email all this and we can say definitely the standard of living has gone up okay salary generally has also gone up okay now we then come to the the uh, fourth industrial revolution uh. so the first three industrial revolution you saw uh, has increased job productivity has increased standard of living has increased income of people generally okay people income has gone up last time uh, in my grandfather's time all this and uh, they were just struggling to chari makan okay today we are most of us can chari makan don't talk about this uh, before covid 19 uh, we can chari makan uh, huh? we are looking for other things ps5 my son wants ps5 okay uh handphone games all these things we're looking for more okay uh, but we can say the industrial revolution one two three has increased productivity standard of living income health and as a result population of the world also increased okay when people got more food more things uh, we have more population you can see the animal population you feed the monkeys a lot uh, more monkeys will come out okay if we feed monkeys in the jungle all this and uh, more monkeys will come out uh. okay. now industrial revolution 4.0 uh, the thing is that uh, um, productivity will increase standard of living will increase income will it increase yes it will increase if you are highly skilled but if you are not skilled maybe no job also okay population big question mark will it go up or will it go down if people don't have income okay um, during war time all this during the war itself population don't grow after the war it grows huh? okay so so the fourth industrial revolution that experts are saying we are going in is an age of artificial intelligence robots drones 3d printing okay um standard of living as i say yes it will go up i think generally it will go up salary will go up if for it people but there will be great greater income in inequality already the third industrial revolution you can see uh, those people who know it especially in india their standard of living go up a lot those who are not educated 
in India, you can see very clear, they don't have house, they don't have toilets, they don't have, they can't even go to school. Okay, they are just living in the outdoors itself. Okay, now unemployment, uh, fourth industrial revolution, experts are saying there will be unemployment. Okay, um, and after so we will discuss a bit more on this. And I pose to you the question, if people don't have a uh, high income, uh, people don't have higher income, people don't have jobs, uh, what about the world population? Okay, big question mark. Uh. Why do I say that? Uh? If you study the history of horses, uh, before cars were invented, uh, the horses were, there were lots of horses around in, in America, okay, used for carrying things on this. When cars were invented, uh, not immediately, but after 5, 10, 20 years, uh, the population of horses went down drastically. The horse is only used for racing and for, uh, for rich people. Okay. Uh, so, now, so today we can see that um, this factory producing cars, Mercedes-Benz, this is a Mercedes-Benz factory, where they use the robots throughout the whole factory uh, to produce cars. And this factory has been in operation for seven years already, okay, using robots to produce cars. Okay, it's running, you can go to YouTube, you can see. Today, they are using robots for dirty jobs like frying french fries. Okay, and these are deployed in fast food restaurants. It's helping people, but it's also, in a sense, they need less people. Okay, and uh, even in Ara Damansara, you can see uh, robots like this serving food. Okay, it's being deployed here and there. You go to Singapore hotels, to Malaysia top hotels, there are robots bringing you things for you into your rooms. Okay. Um, China has started mass producing autonomous cars. Okay, this is just recently. The mass uh, robot cars, robotic cars, driverless cars, they are mass producing it. And I hear also in Japan itself, there are factories that uh, are using robots to produce, to manufacture more robots. Okay. These are the things that are happening around the world. Um, and what is the impact? Uh? Straight times ask, will robots take our children's job? Okay, Guardian USA says this. Robots, robots will destroy our jobs and we are not ready for it. Okay, straight times is here. Will robots take over our children's job? Now, some experts have said uh, okay, that 46% of jobs in manufacturing, 32% of jobs in finance, 44% of jobs in wholesale and retail are forecasted to be lost in about 10 years' time. Okay, and this is even before the pandemic. Uh, maybe with the pandemic, it is even higher. I don't know. Okay, uh, all I can tell you is that today there are um, warehouses that are run by factory, by robots. Okay, Amazon has been using it. There's, it's, it's widely deployed nowadays. Now, what jobs are most likely to be affected? Okay, not all jobs are affected equally. Routine, repetitive jobs huh, will be likely. Okay, you can use this calculator um, that was produced by BBC and Oxford University to see how likely a robot will replace the job. Okay, so if you aspire to be a, a bank clerk, huh, bank counter clerk, huh, then uh, I think it's about 97% chance. You go into here, you go and play with it, 
97% chance robot will replace you in 20 years time. Okay, now remember 20 years time, uh, you are starting your career today, 20 years time, you are still working uh, and you'll be advanced into your career. Okay, so you don't want to be competing with robots for your jobs. Okay, um, check this out. Um, engineer, what is the percentage? Uh, finance officer, what is the percentage? Uh, accountants, what is the percentage? All this, okay. Uh, quite easy. Just go and check it out. I, we won't have time to go through it, but you can just check it out. Okay. But I can tell you that quite a lot of jobs are quite high percentage. Okay. The jobs that are lower percentage is actually IT jobs. Okay. IT jobs, marketing jobs, and nurse jobs. Huh? Okay. Nursing. Uh, less likely to be affected okay so if you go in yeah this is the screen you go in you tap in and then you can tell you okay the percentage okay so i trust that you understand That, that IT is going to impact the world from Industrial Revolution 1, 2, 3, and the fourth one as well. Those who have IT skills, who are higher skills, will get higher pay jobs. Okay, uh, even today itself, you've got SAP skills. You can fly around the world and get a job. I got friends, my wife is an SAP specialist, and she her company fly her to Houston, America to work. Okay, I got, uh, and because of her, I know people who actually are working as expatriates, Malaysians working as expatriates in London, in uh, New York, in Australia. Okay, not because we are, and it shows that we Malaysians can be as clever as anybody else. Okay. Provided we have the right skills and exposure. Okay. Uh, so now the next question, uh, which is true for many of uh, uh, some of us, uh, of us uh, is what if you don't like IT? What if you don't like techy stuff? How? Martina. Okay. Now I want to say this. Uh, and this is true for myself. I study computer science. Uh, you know, I study computer science, right? Okay. Um, but the thing is that, and yeah, I can do programming. I can do that. Huh? I charge my time with programming, but I don't like to do programming. Okay. I don't quite enjoy it. Uh, I can do, sometimes we can do, but we don't enjoy it. But um, I have to say this, you don't need to, do programming okay as a business person it is important to understand it and to know how to deploy it how to use it for organizations okay you don't have to be the person doing the programming okay you call me to this day uh, uh, i remember when i was studying my master's uh, because it was a uh, must the the which is they want they follow mit USA. So they force us to learn uh, uh, engineering, maths, calculus, a lot of hair there. Okay. Hair, no more hair, uh, then drop some more hair. Okay. So uh, for myself, I know also, you ask me to do techy stuff, force me to do, put a gun to me. Yes, I, I struggle. Uh, I, would, I can do that, uh, huh? but I don't enjoy doing. So it's important to know. Firstly, yes, you can do it, but do you really enjoy doing it? Okay. Secondly, if you can't do it, uh, doesn't matter. Okay. Still learn IT, but learn how learn to understand it and learn how to deploy, it, how to use it for organizations. Okay. And uh, as management people, we can learn this thing so that then we can be better able to utilize and deploy IT.
you know the a lot of rich people actually uh, after that a lot of rich people actually the people who make money from it are not the technical people who make lots of money now huh? it's actually the business people the management people okay i will explain a little bit more later on now then to those of um to some of you who are it people why do you need to study management okay why study management okay and uh, let me explain uh. now management business is is almost then uh, it's almost the same in business and management uh, you learn about you learn many things you learn about finance okay you learn about finance you learn about accounting which is different from finance uh. accounting is different from, you learn about operations okay you learn about goal setting strategy competitors you learn about setting a vision why is visioning important you learn about marketing you learn planning teamwork uh, growth research all kinds of things you learn you learn a whole basket all kinds of things uh, that will help a business to grow okay uh, okay now cut down to the board and why why need to learn business uh? i say this okay if you want to be even if you can do it uh, and you can do it well uh, you may want to study business and management if you want to be very rich okay very rich not just rich uh. it as a technical person if you are very if you are good they'll pay you a good salary okay if you are very good they'll pay you a very good salary okay but if you want to be super rich uh, become a businessman entrepreneur okay uh, you look at it the richest people in the world the richest people in the world are all business owners okay bill gates uh is a tech techie guy but he's more than that he's actually more a businessman okay bill gates and then the tesla owner he understands techie thing but he owns the business okay the uh, lee ka sheng asia richest guy a property investor okay all all the richest people in the world the uh, other than if you are born in royalty now of course if you are just uh, brunei of sultan all this sultan yeah then different uh, huh? but the richest people normal people like us are all business owners okay so one big factor why you want to study management and business is if you want to become super rich yes that's the way to go about um, just recently a malaysian guy son of a taxi driver if you read the news son of a taxi driver became a billionaire why because um, he started his factory manufacturing things okay and the factory manufactured things for solar energy for uh, all this and the products are demanded overseas okay and because of that he became a billionaire okay now the I want to consider studying management uh, or you should study management is that uh, in management if you in management you get to work and lead people work with people working with people is can be very fun can be very challenging but uh, it can be very rewarding also so uh, if you like working with people all this you should consider if you like people you should consider uh, working management okay with computers i work on computers everything is computer require uh, lonely life okay the uh, third reason uh, why you want to study you should study management is that you can be your own boss okay now not everybody may become very rich uh, in any way sometimes it takes 10 20 years that guy who became billionaire took 30 40 years okay but 
being your own boss is 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 good now huh uh, not straight away lah, but being your own boss is good why good because then you decide when you want to work how you want to work what time you want to work okay so uh, you got more freedom okay and last but not least uh, the, um, when you study business and management uh, you learn to do investments okay uh, property share you can invest in property you can invest in share market you can invest in bitcoin okay and even if you are holding a full-time job uh, you can do part-time investments okay and for many malaysians uh, many of us who are employees uh, uh, we may not be earning fantastic salary but our investment can make us uh, financially rich okay so yeah so these are the reasons you should consider studying management now let me introduce the bams program to you this is a quite a new program okay around the in malaysia and um price management system it is a hybrid of many of the percentages later in what we study um, the thing is BAMS is this you get to understand and to use IT and enterprise systems okay SAP you may not know but SAP is a ERP software that is used by 90% of the world largest 90% okay so in, in Malaysia Petronas um, Shell a lot of company uses SAP, or the big and the rich companies. Okay, and the thing is that it's just equally important, if not more important. SAP is used by companies throughout the world. Ninety percent of the world largest company uses SAP. What this means is that if you learn SAP well, uh, your skills is in demand worldwide okay and if your skills are in demand worldwide it also means uh, that if you are good uh, companies overseas will headhunt for you and ask you to work in their countries maybe even as an expatriate okay you work expatriate in other countries uh, very nice one okay a friend of mine worked in london as an expatriate he gets a uh, top-notch housing near buckingham palace okay apartment fully paid for by the his company okay living there earning london uh british pounds okay times don't know how many the time i went was time seven okay and living the expatriate lifestyle even better okay but uh not not the uh, whether you get it or not i'm not sure uh, huh? it depends on each of us now okay whether every day we make the right decisions that you are doing the right decision today coming uh, sacrificing your saturday morning to learn to improve yourself okay so now this bams program will also teach you hands-on skill in data analytics enterprise systems programming okay we not only teach you knowledge we teach you hands-on skill okay hands-on skill means you get to work you get to work on data analytics you get to work on uh, to do hands-on SAP system. You get hands-on on programming. Now, I did mention uh, no need to do programming, uh, but it's good to learn some programming so you understand. Okay, so you understand programming. Not that we want to make you a powerful programmer, okay, but so that you understand. Okay, now the careers uh, for banks, uh, if you study banks, the uh, careers are this. Uh, you can become a data scientist you know big data data scientist uh, you can become uh, big data is one of the biggest thing happening so you can become a data scientist okay you can become an erp consultant sap consultant all this okay um, you can become it business executives okay and there's lots of future new jobs now the thing with 
all these three jobs, and you go and check the website I give you uh, the BBC on these jobs are jobs that the robot are less likely to take over. Okay, and if you compare with the Malaysian uh, Malaysian government came up with the jobs in demand, uh, MDEC came up with the study jobs in demand. Uh, these are the jobs that Malaysia likes. Not only Malaysia like, uh, these are the jobs that the world needs in the future, in the currently and also in the future. Okay, so we are producing graduates that are in demand today as well as in the future. Okay, uh, there's a shortfall of the people for this kind of job. Okay, people still in this, uh, all this in Malaysia and worldwide. Now, the BAMS program, as you know, is a hybrid between uh, IT and business and management. Okay. Um, we will teach you more than 28% on business and management. And the subjects we teach is things like cyber entrepreneurship, teaching you to be a businessman. Very important. Okay. Uh, of course, we teach you marketing, finance, accounting economics, business communications, all these are uh, uh, management and business courses, okay? 45% more, almost 50%, actually 50% if you count the elective final year project, all this. We are teaching you IT subjects, things like database management system, business process re-engineering, SAP, ERP hands-on, data analytics, and enterprise architecture. Give me a minute, uh, don't mind. Give me one second. The vacuum cleaner going on. Okay, thank you. Someone, I don't know whether you can hear, someone was vacuuming the house. Okay. Uh, Okay, we are, as, as I mentioned, SAP ERP hands on. We teach you two modules, uh, FICO and materials management. Okay, um, we teach data analytics using machine language techniques. Okay, and enterprise architecture. These are some of the courses. And the, you ask me what is the rest? The rest 27% is Mata Pelajaran Umun subjects. Uh, electives which can be IT or management, up to you. The final year project, industrial attachment. Okay. Now, you do the course with us, and you will get the SAP cert. Okay. In fact, you get two SAP cert for two modules. This is just one module, you get another one. Okay. Signed by me. Okay. On top of that, you get the Keen certificate, uh, keen certificate on data science. Okay. And um, this one depends how good you are. You can get one or two certs. Okay. At least one cert you should get a uh, basic of proficiency. But if you are very good, you can get an cert. Okay. Uh, but that one, not everyone can get. Only the good students can get. Uh, huh? uh, this cert is issued by uh, Keen. Uh, and this cert uh, actually costs euro one thousand two two hundred sorry euro two hundred and fifty on the market to get this cert it costs euro two fifty it's actually an online test you have to do okay and we get it uh, you you want to you pass a test you uh, to sit for the test you have to pay euro two fifty which is thousand over Malaysian ringgit okay but for our students uh, we have made an arrangement with them that our students get the cert free of charge. Okay, one cert or two cert up to you. But one cert we can have, we will teach you to get the second cert, depends how good you are. Keen will issue you the cert. Okay, then of course you can get other certs uh, from, um, depending on the subjects you take. Okay, if you take with me on um, e-commerce, on my courses, you can get a cyber awareness challenge. Okay, from the US Department of Defense. Okay, uh, then Python 101, all these courses. 
okay, certs. Uh, you can get all these are professional certs which will help you when you apply for jobs. Okay, to show your employer evidence base that you have the skill set. Now, last, not last, second last, actually, why study at MMU? Okay, why should you study at MMU? Why choose MMU? Okay, what's so special about MMU? Okay, this is multimedia university. It is a beautiful place in Cyber Jaya. Okay. Beautiful, yeah, it's a beautiful place in Sambajaya. Okay, uh, I'm trying to see where is my office. Uh. My office is here, okay, somewhere here. Yeah, my office here, corner unit here. Okay, that's the faculty of management here. Okay, and uh, nice, lovely place. I welcome you to come and see the place. We got swimming pool here. You can see the swimming pool here. Okay, we got swimming pool here. We got the mini stadium here on the left side. You can see the mini stadium. Okay. Now you may be surprised to know that multimedia university has actually three campuses in Cyber Jaya, where I'm at, in Malacca and in Johor. Okay, our total student population is uh, 12,000, 5,000 at Cyber Jaya, 7,000 Malacca, and 120 in Johor. Johor, of course, is a specialized place for making movies. Now, why, why, do you, why should you study at MMU? Okay, why not go to study other universities? Lots of competition elsewhere, right? Let me give you three reasons. Three reasons. Okay. Um, industrial integration, innovation and entrepreneurship, and learning experience. Three reasons. Okay, you try to remember this three. Industrial integration. First one. Let me talk about that. MMU is Malaysia's first private university. 1996, we started. Okay, and um, we were the pioneers of the new frontier for digital economy. Okay, and today we believe we are still the pioneers. Okay, we are still doing uh, revolutionary things. Okay, and because we started so early, uh, we have lots of industrial and government linkages. You name it, TM, of course, is our parent company, but with many other government agencies and private companies, we have relationship. Okay, Many of our graduates have gone on to senior positions in many of these companies. Okay, So we have a, a strong bond of relationship. For example, MDEC, I believe the head there is actually MMU graduate. Okay, so a lot of places. So our relationship is not just formal, it is um, it is informal as well. Okay. Now we are also uh, have many professional bodies recognition from if you are accountants, um, of course, CPA Australia, CPA Malaysia, very important. Uh, CIMA, ACCA, okay, if you are finance, Asian Institute of Chartered Bankers, Engineering, or some many, huh? many. Yeah. Okay. We are the most preferred institute of higher education by companies. Okay, not we say one, but Frost and Sullivan and MTEC says that. Okay. Premier Digital Tech University and all kinds of one, uh, uh, recognition we have. Okay, 
in terms of ranking, we are amenities in Malaysia. Uh, top 20 among universities in Malaysia, according to QS ranking, if it, that includes the government public universities as well. Okay. And in Asia, 170. Okay. So, uh, and I believed in MMU, uh, you get value for money. Okay. So, that's industrial integration. The second thing I will talk about is innovation and entrepreneurship. Innovation. Now, entrepreneurship uh, is a whole ecosystem. We teach it. We teach it in courses. Okay. Um, we teach in courses. Okay. But it is not just knowledge on it. Okay, it is also the environment. We have the environment in MMU for you to succeed as an entrepreneur. We have support. We give seed funding money, um, and um, we have uh, businesses, entrepreneurs locating their business in MMU. Okay, so it's the environment. We have the staff also. Our staff, many of our staff are entrepreneurs. Okay, um, and we have clubs, startup schemes, all kinds of things to for entrepreneurs activities. And last but not least, we have impact. Okay, we have um, produced many famous entrepreneurs. Okay, so it is an ecosystem. It is not just a subject, not just head knowledge. Now, so from the very start, by us, you will be doing hands-on entrepreneur skills, uh, be exposed to higher order thinking skills, uh, and also to social corporate responsibilities. You want to make money, but you also need to keep your food clean and the environment clean. So our students are engaged in all these kind of uh, businesses for their first exposure. Okay, and then we have business project and appreciation week. But of course, all this is pre-COVID time uh, and uh, hopefully post-COVID time also, we'll, we'll do, be doing such things. Uh, okay, so uh, and our student entrepreneurs learn to cook, learn to make drinks, learn to do whatever it takes to make a profit. Okay, and so social works, they're going to help the poor, the elderly. Now, um, some of our famous inventors, uh, Dr. Kevin Coy, Jun Yi, he's from, he's actually an MMU student, alumni as well as he was a staff of MMU as well. And he was one of the scientists uh, who actually, uh, part of the team that actually took the first image of a super massive black hole. This was in the paper. Uh, about maybe a year ago, he was one of the scientists that formed the Event Horizon Telescope. Lots of hard work. He came to MMU and speak, and you know, they, they have to spend months all waiting for the right moment, all kinds of hard work doing. But uh, eventually, the hard work paid off. Mukta uh, spin off the Polytech. Sandriam Behar, and it was awarded the best startup award, okay, in the ITEC 2019. Okay, and um, many of you will be familiar with Bobo Boy. Bobo Boy, all this, yes, one of our uh, more famous alumni. Okay, and these are other famous alumni. Uh, yeah, Bobo Boy, Mohammad Nizam. Uh, we are very strong in FCI, in creative multimedia, uh, media hustler, Tan Hui Ling from FOM, started 23. Okay. Uh, Ko Chuan Cheng started solar energy, maybe the next billionaire. Okay. No Helmi, 
and yeah, we have many, and these are just a few of our famous entrepreneurs. Uh. Okay, so we have a track record of producing entrepreneurs. Okay. Now, third but not least, uh, so you remember three reasons why you should choose MMU, industrial integration, industry, innovation and entrepreneurship. And the third one is learning experience. Okay, learning experience. Now, I just spent some time uh, last two days ago, I listened to all my students' presentation. And I, again, was reminded that learning is hard work, okay? Um, I had to eat sweets and all kinds of things to keep myself awake, listening three, four hours, okay? Two, three hours, actually, uh, to the students to, yeah to the students paying attention uh, to their presentation. So I understand that learning is hard work. Okay, it is not easy. People think just sit down there, but learning, you need to have your mind active. You need to concentrate. It is hard work. And for me, some I need to snack uh, to concentrate. Uh, I need to eat something. Okay. Uh, and part of learning uh, is part of learning is that we have sorry let me show this i think i can't show this is a, a video video on our uh, intelligent learning lab but okay sorry i think i forgot to test this out early on it doesn't seem to run okay um, we have intelligent learning labs in throughout mmu Okay, and other facilities we have, I mentioned we have uh, swimming pool, studio, gymnasium, mini stadium, 3D cinema, all these things. Okay, um, part of learning is the environment. We provide a conducive environment for learning. Okay, the other part of learning is the software. I think by the software, I mean the, the lecturers, the academicians. Okay. Our academicians have learned uh, in the past, uh, during my time when I studied in universities like this, one person, 300 people here, lecturers speak. That is called passive learning. Everyone just sit down. But today we are going into active learning, okay, where uh, you participate, you do things, you learn as you do things, okay. This, uh, we learn blended learning, team-based learning, okay. And students, we find that students learn more this way when you're actively engaged in what you are learning, okay? And some more, we use uh, blended learning. We use IT, like uh, tools like Padlet, Kahoot, all these things, and the students have fun doing it, okay? Uh, they do their things all on paper, then they present on the computer through Padlet. Take a picture, whatever, then present it, okay? Yeah, we use Google Classroom, uh, all this as well, uh, Google Meet, all this. Uh, infographics, we use Snap. Depending on the class, we use Snapcar Canvas and to present your things, okay? To present what you learn, presentations, all this, okay? Um, we do team-based learning. Team-based learning, uh, we make learning fun and with teams, uh, you get twice the fun. You learn together with your friends okay so you can see our students are having fun now unfortunately now it is covid time covid time uh, you can't go to the campus online we are the uh, there's online learning but rest assured many of our students are still having fun okay um, many of the classes are not big so we still have a lot of personal interactions Okay, and sometimes I get my students, uh, if they're sporting enough, I get my students, to, those who can sing, uh, sing a song. Yeah, uh, add some fun element to the class itself. Okay, so it's not boring. Okay, um, now, if you are still not interested in Bachelor of Enterprise Management System, not to worry, I assure you in MMU and FOM, we have many other courses that's available in FOM itself we have the Bachelor of Financial Engineering course 
if you are interested in fintech you may want to consider this course uh, we have bachelor of analytical economics bachelor of marketing bachelor of business management finance and of course uh, the most popular course bachelor of accounting okay bachelor of accounting we have the um, most number of professional qualifications and exemptions from from ccpa all the stuff okay uh, you can scan this qr code to watch an introduction video of the programs okay last but not least uh, uh, anyone got any question answer you want to ask and natalia can maybe you can put in the comment there and natalia can maybe bring it up yeah any questions? I'm looking at the comments now. Huh? Let me switch back. Huh? Okay. Uh, let's go back to. I'm coming out of this video, this presentation. Okay, Buhan, let's go back. Okay, anyone got any questions? Yeah, oh, stop sharing. Stop ready, right? Okay, stop sharing. Yes. Any questions going? No, I don't see. I'm trying to see the the comments. No questions, huh? Is there any questions, Buhan, uh, Natalia? Hmm. Bole kita have a look at our program. Kerja architect and programming. Ah. Wow. Okay. Architect and programming. Wow. Uh, Aquila. Not in MMU. Lah, huh? In other places, you can consider it. Or you can do a double major. In some universities, uh, uh, ask them about a double major. Architect and programming. Uh, can you take a job cert in MMU? Adam, uh, uh, look into our program, but you probably need to sign up with FCI, Faculty of Computing Information. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? No. Uh? No double degree in MMU. Mm -hmm. uh, not yet. Uh. Not yet. Coming soon. Coming soon. Okay. Right now, no. Coming soon. Uh, yeah. If there's more of a demand, let us know. We can consider it. Uh. Okay. If you have, yeah. But double degree also means you take extra one year, you know. I took extra one year to do. Uh, are you willing to do that yourself? Okay. So, um, yeah, if there are no other questions, I want to thank all of you for coming. And um, yeah, wish you a uh, great weekend and stay strong, stay safe. If you need to contact me, my email is chsaw at mmu.edu.my. Okay, or you can contact us through the website itself. Again, thank you for your time and bye.